let's focus on one set of numbers that came in yesterday. Hindalco, they reported an overall beat. You know, for Hindalco, we look at three big numbers. That's the aluminum EBITDA, the copper EBITDA, as well as the debt number. We are now joined by Mr. Satish Pai, uh, who is uh, the MD of the company, to talk about the past quarter's numbers. Well, Mr. Pai, good morning and thanks so much for joining in. The aluminum business, that's improved sequentially. But how much more can it improve from year on is the question. So try to give me two numbers. One is your outlook on aluminum prices. And the second factor is the rough EBITDA per ton band for the aluminum business. So what we are planning for is that the LME will be in that sort of range in the first half of the year, that is 2200 to 2400. And the EBITDA per ton in H1 should also be between seven and eight hundred dollars per ton. But what we are hoping for, like many of the analysts in the second half of the year, if the US uh, economy starts uh, stabilizing and the rate cuts are over, if the Chinese economy starts to pick up a bit, because supply and demand is so tight, you could see LME going up in the second half of the year. And then hopefully we should start to see higher EBITDA per ton than the seven and eight hundred, which I'm expecting in H1. Uh, sir, aluminum profitability will have two key monitorables. How much can coal cool off and how much aluminum sales are hedged? So we have 11% of the aluminum hedged at $2,750 per ton for FY24. And uh, our Q4 costs were down 6% versus Q3 largely because uh, coal e-auction prices came down and coal availability went up. Our expectation for Q1 is to be at a cost that is flattish with uh, Q1 because we're going into the monsoon season and hence, you know, coal availability towards the latter half, June, July could get tight. So we are uh, sort of guiding that Q1 will be flattish from a cost perspective with Q1. All right. You know, Mr. Pai, the surprise element also came from the smaller part of your EBITDA from the domestic business, the copper business. Now, I recall we discussing a few quarters ago about whether 400, 450 crores odd is sustainable. Now you're doing more than 550 crores per quarter. What's the run rate we should look at for the next few quarters? Yeah, I think that uh, first thing is quarter one, we are having a, a major shutdown of smelter one. So uh, the EBITDA for quarter one will be in more in the 350 to 400 range because we have a 65 day shutdown of smelter one. But if you take Q2, Q3, Q4, I think we should be in that 500 uh, plus uh, crores of EBITDA per ton on the copper side. The TCRCs this year are about 20 to 21 cents a pound, uh, much higher than the 16 to 17 cents a pound that was there in calendar year 22. Uh, sir, Novellus was disappointing, but you are guiding for an improvement from here on. What levels should we look at uh, going ahead and when does it get back to $500 per ton? Yeah, I think that, you know, we uh, hit $430 per ton in Q4 as we had predicted. I think the first two quarters of this year, you're going to be uh, somewhere between that number and maybe 475 because there is still some destocking of can to happen in Q1. So what we have guided thus far is that in the second half of the year, we should get back to that $500 per ton run rate. Okay, all right. So we have got the aluminum business outlook done. That's $700 to around $800 per ton. The copper business as well. In the near term, it could see some bit of a headwind, but going ahead, you believe it will improve and novelists as well. Let's focus on debt reduction then. Good to see some debt reduction driven by working capital release. But what's the outlook from year on? Keeping in mind, you have ambitious CAPEX plans. So look, the Indian business is uh, net debt free because our gross debt in India is still 12,000 crores. So I think that in India, we will be roughly, you know, below that number one, because even this year, most of the CAPEX is going to come out of the cash that we have generated. I think on the Novellis side, because their cash flow is more to, uh, geared towards the second half. They are currently at about 2.3 net debt to EBITDA in Q4. Uh, they could be touching towards three in the first half of this year, but for the full year, they will also be comfortably near around about the 2.5 times net debt to EBITDA. Can you give us some more clarity? Can you guide us to an absolute debt number? Debt numbers itself are not going to change. 
because we are not going to pay down any more debt uh, uh, this year. We are going to put most of the cash generated towards the capex because you have not asked me, but uh, Novellus will have $1.8 billion worth of capex for that large US plant that's going on. And in India, we'll be spending around 5,000 crores of capex. So overall, we have quite a large capex plan this year and most of the cash will be going towards capex. We will not be paying down any more debt because the balance sheet is strong, net debt to EBITDA is under control. So, sir, you have cash. You don't want to pare down your debt anymore. Your debt is under control. So, would you look at diversifying? Because the government of India is looking at divesting. So, would you be interested in any assets? No, I think we are an aluminium and copper company. So, anything that comes up in aluminium and copper, we will certainly take a look, but not steel. Okay, so then what about Nalco or Hindustan Copper? They come in the you know business ambit that you are looking at. Would you consider them? I think on Hindustan Copper, we will be certainly taking a, a very good look. Okay, well, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate you joining in and uh, good uh, getting that perspective across. Uh, thanks very much.